Hello and welcome to another video. This is going to be the beginning of my series of videos on trigonometry. And so we're going to start from the very, very basic idea of trigonometry. Okay, so this question is to compute the six trig functions for angle A. Well, as you can see, this is a right triangle and that's what we use to begin the whole idea of trig functions. A right triangle. You can apply these things to other types of triangles, but you will have to apply some extra techniques to be able to use them. But the definition of trig um, functions is on the basis of a right triangle. And you already know what a right triangle is. It's any triangle that contains 190 degree and the other two angles will have to um, add up to 90 degrees so that everything is 180 degrees. So you can basically say that angle A and angle B are complementary angles because when you add them together, you're going to get another 90 that makes the total 180 degrees. Okay, some quick um, review. The side that is facing the 90 degree angle in a right triangle is always called the hypotenuse and it's always the longest side. Now, these are the sides that are not, that formed the right angle are called the legs, okay? So, this is a leg and this is a leg. However, we don't know this leg, but we can find this other side by using the Pythagorean formula, okay? Remember Pythagorean formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, the way I want you to label this in your mind is that the side facing the angle c is called side c, small letter c the side facing, so you can actually say that this is, um, you can call this side B, you can call this side C, you can call this side A, okay, on the inside. Just put those small labels, because they help you. So this side now, facing this angle, is called side A, and this is called side B, this is called side C, as you can see, so that when we do our A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we can easily get our side. Let's do that quickly, and just get this side out of the way. Okay, uh, let's do the math here. I can erase it later. So we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared from Pythagorean formula. Um, I need this side before we even go back to writing the trig ratios because we need all the sides to be able to answer the question. So what is a squared? We don't know what a squared is, but we know that a squared plus b squared, what is b, is 1 squared equals c squared. That's going to be 3 squared. Okay, so we've got a squared will be plus 1 equals 9, and so a squared will be 9 minus 1, which gives us 8. Okay, so our a is going to be plus or minus the square root of um, 8, but we don't want to do minus because the side of a triangle cannot be negative, so we're just going to stick to the square root of 8. Now, do not leave your answer as the square root of 8, because 8 contains one of its factors um, being a, that's bad English, I'm just saying that one of the, the factors of 8 is a prime number, is a, is a perfect square, okay? So because it's a perfect square, you have to take out that perfect square. Remember, we can write square root of 8 as square root of 4 times the square root of 2, and I know that the square root of 4 is 2, so times square root of 2, so I know a is 2 root 2. That's what I'm going to write here. Now, you have to get used to seeing square root signs every time you do trig because it's going to happen a lot of times because it's all about the right triangle and there's so many square roots and um, radicals that you're going to be seeing. Okay, so get used to that. So now we have the three sides of this triangle written out. Let us now write the six basic trig functions. You must know them. Let's start with all them, all of them listed out, and then we can write what they are. Let's do that. The question we're about to answer talks about the angle A. So I'm not going to focus on angle B. I just want to talk about A, assuming A is the angle that we're focused on. Okay, because that's what the question requires. Write all the trig ratios. Now, I've written the short form, which is usually the form you will see in all mathematical expressions um, of this. This is sine and it is written as S-I-N-E in full if you want to write that, but I'm not interested in that in this video. Just want you to know that this is sine A, not sin, it is sine. And this is cosine, this is tangent, this is cosecant, this is secant, and this is cotangent. Okay, now 
How would you remember all of these? Well, again, let's go back to some basic things. You've heard Soka Toa before when you did your geometry or something. There must have been something like that mentioned to you so that when you want to define sine, you say that it is opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, this is what you were told, and you see that the first letter is S O H, so it is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we use the abbreviation SO for that. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so you can say it is sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So we can say that the sine of an angle A, so if we look at this angle A, we say if you want to define the sine of this angle, it is basically the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Remember the hypotenuse is constant, it doesn't change. So what side is opposite this angle? It's this. So the sine of angle A is 2 rad 3 divided by 3 because it's opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to write this here. This is equal to 2 rad 3 over, sorry, 2 rad 2 divided by 3. And that's all you need to know. That's, that's the basic thing you need to know. So we go to the second one. It is cosine. By definition, the trig function cosine is the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. Now, what do you call adjacent? Well, adjacent side is basically um, the side, one of the sides that forms the angle that's adjacent, which means beside. So you can't use the hypotenuse. So the only side that is beside that formed this angle is one. So the ratio of this other side that formed the angle to the hypotenuse is the cosine, okay? And by definition, we can say that cosine is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. C-A-H, that's the K, okay? From Sokatoa. I'm gonna write Sokatoa so you can see it here. This is so K. That's all you need to know. Okay, now let's go back here and say that the cosine of angle A will be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which would be, I'm going to write A over H. So let's go to the triangle. The cosine of angle A is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, which is going to be 1 divided by 3. We're done. Let's go to the third one. It's tangent. By definition, the tangent of an angle is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. So this is the beauty of this one. So the tangent of angle A is the ratio of the opposite side to the adjacent side. You, you cannot use any, do anything with the hypotenuse. It's just the ratio of the legs, okay? Starting from the opposite to the one that touches the angle itself. So the one that's away to the one that's near. For this angle A. So the tangent of A is going to be the opposite divided by the adjacent and that's why you have this TOA here, opposite over adjacent for tangent. And so we have O over A and that gives us some um, opposite is 2 root 3 over 1. So that's going to be 2 root 2 rather because 2 root 2 divided by 1 is just 2 root 2. And that's your answer there. Now, what about these other ones? Well, the easy part of this is once you get these ones, you can easily know what these will be, how you just flip. So the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. That's how you uh, write it. It's cosecant. This is the full cosecant. Okay, the reciprocal of sine is cosecant. Just flip the fraction. Okay, flip the fraction or put one on top of the fraction. So in this case, if I flip sine A, it's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. Hypotenuse over opposite. Okay, what is the hypotenuse and what is the opposite? It's going to be 3 over 2 rad 2. So that's 3 over 2 rad 2. Now, some instructors don't like you leaving the radical in the denominator. So you might have to rationalize this, but that's not the basis for this video. So I'm gonna leave it this way. And if you look at this, it is this one flipped. You can see, just flip it. The same thing for secant A, we just need to flip cosine, 
okay? So if we flip this, well, what are we gonna get? Well, by definition, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. This has to be hypotenuse over adjacent, which is gonna be um, what? Um, three over one, which is just three. By the way, if you wanna know which one is, just look at the third letter in this, these ones. You can see in the middle of this, remember this is cosecant. The third letter in the full name is S, which means it's a reciprocal of sine. The third letter in this one is secant. So it's a reciprocal of cosine. The third letter in the name of this one is, this is fully cotangent. Okay, the third letter is T, which is the reciprocal of tangent. So that's how I reminded myself when I learned this. So that's what you're gonna do. So this is three, and finally, cotangent is the flipped version of this. This is gonna be A over O, adjacent over opposite, which in this case is gonna be one over two rad two, um, and that's it, one over two rad two. And those are the ba basic trig functions that you need to know. If you can write them out in any case, you already understand this. That's all you need to know. Make sure you know the side and you do the correct thing. In the next video, I'm going to show you some very amazing relationships that exist among some of these, uh, especially between sine and cosine and between sine, cosine and tangent. I hope this video was helpful. Look out for the next video. So I'm going to gradually make it more and more complicated as we go on. There might be about 10 videos in this series. I'll see you in the next video. Do not stop learning because those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.